Welcome to Kit Catastrophe. My name is Kit, and today we'll be taking a look at Transformers Energon, Energon Class RC. This figure came out in 2004 as part of Wave 3 of the Energon Assortment. Energon RC is cut from a completely different cloth from the rest of the Omnicons due to her not sharing the other mold's more utilitarian alternate modes. While Skyblast was a functional fighter jet or reconnaissance craft, Strong Arm a burly and capable workhorse, and Signal Flare a... thing, RC chooses a mode quite a bit more sporty, a racing bike. RC's bicyclical alternate mode is a touch more rounder and bulbous than the other three, due in part to the sleek and slender nature of the bike's purpose. Real women have curves, of course, and this is a very curvy bike. The windscreen is very nicely sculpted and detailed, and is cast in the traditional Omnicon red, although RC's translucent plastic is a touch thinner than normal, giving the faux glass a pinkish tint, which is fitting. More pink, along with a salmony bronze hue, is present throughout the rest of the motorcycle through the use of some sparing yet prominent paint applications, most prominently preceding and succeeding the seat of this crotch rocket and adorning the fuel tank and wheel spokes. Otherwise, the color scheme is a very monochromatic charcoal black and a milky off-white, with the only other coloration coming from some metallic blue whoosh stripes just behind the cowl and a bright yellow headlight. While the paintwork may be fine, the sculpt work could use a little work, but I can be forgiving considering the size of this figure. The sides of the bike are kind of ugly, with the massive joints on the flanks and the visible hand flaps at the tail. The robot shins don't hide very well at the bottom, but the lines of the sculpt flow well enough, I guess. And even then, the robot hands could act as some sort of air brake or set of rear handlebars for a passenger or something, I don't know. As you can plainly see, RC's tires aren't nearly wide enough for her to stand on her own, but she does have a massive peg sticking out of the side that can act as a sort of kickstand. However, the bike is rendered at such an angle as to look somewhat unrealistic from my layman eyes, but I know as much about bikes as much as I know about human interaction, so... RC's Autobot Energon Star fits itself where the bike's gas cap would be, more or less. It's probably for the best that RC doesn't need a pilot to drive her around, because they wouldn't be able to see the speedometer with it in the way. Do be careful removing that star, the connection is far tighter than any of the other Omnicons. RC's Energon weapons in this mode materialize as some extra boosters for the bike, which end up being able to keep her upright at all times. The left side apparatus is your traditional booster of sorts, while the right side has a spring-loaded missile launcher. It's been a while since we saw one of those. <laughs> RC's transformation is, well, unrefined, finicky, messy, and generally not much fun at all. Sure, it's kind of smart with how the robot mass is integrated into the alternate mode, but surely the transformation scheme could have been more ergonomic, for the lack of a better word. I hate how the legs have to force themselves past either the fuselage or the windscreen to get into their more humanoid positions. It feels very unnatural and poorly thought out. The tail of the bike, along with the rear tire, splits apart to form the arms, a move rather familiar if you own any version of the Revenge of the Fallen Bike Scout mold. In fact, I dare say that that particular mold's transformation should have been used on Energon RC, but that's a story for another time, if I ever get around to reviewing Backfire. Finally, you have to rotate the hands into place on these sometimes stiff ball joints, which is a little worrisome. At last, it's over. Yeah, it's kind of obvious that this was one of the first attempts at a female Transformers figure. RC goes from a pretty slender motorbike to being a dumpy pile of ovals stacked precariously on top of each other with tons of kibble thrown in as well. This design feels more than a little slapdash and unfinished. Around the back, there's a gaping chasm where her spine should be, if not for the front tire trying, but not quite succeeding in filling in that gap. The windscreen just hangs off of it like some kind of unfinished skirt. If there was more to it, I could forgive it as a poorly executed stylistic decision, but it's not, so it's just kibble. One could consider the rear tire halves sticking up above her shoulders to be kibble, but this is basically the bike equivalent of door wings, so I'll overlook it. RC's arms are somewhat underdeveloped. They're just chunks of bike mass with some hands stapled to the insides. The construction of these arms severely limit articulation, but I'll go deeper into that later. RC's head sculpt, much like that of most Energon figures, is sculpted in soft focus with little definition. The helmet design is at least interesting, harkening back somewhat to Ariel from the Generation 1 episode War Dawn. Fitting that this mold ended up being repainted into a version of Alita 1. And don't even get me started on the heels. 
High heels on a Transformers figure are never a good idea, especially on one as top-heavy as RC is. I get that the designers wanted to get it across that RC's a girl and all, but was this really necessary? They ruined this figure's stability and it is therefore yet another detriment to articulation. It's nearly impossible to get her standing upright with her weapon in hand. Speaking of which... The two boosters from vehicle mode split apart into four separate components and reconfigure themselves into a shape vaguely resembling a bow. Compared to the size of RC herself, the Energon bow is probably one of the largest Energon weapons, proportionally speaking. It can't exactly fit into RC's hands since they're just panels, but it can seat itself in a 5mm port just below her hand, and due to her jointage, she can't hold it in any direction but sideways. At least it can still fire. <laughs> Oh boy, I can just imagine the comments section for this video. Urgh, bike girl bad. RC bad. Well, truth be told, RC bad. Starting at the head, it has a swivel that goes left and right, and it can go all the way around. I don't know why you want to go all the way around, but it can do that for your exorcism needs. And it does have a joint that makes her look up, but it kind of turtles her head into her torso, so it's not particularly useful. The arms have a ball joint, that means they can swivel forward that far before they bang into these joints, keeping the rear tires on. And they can go backwards that far before they bang into those same joints, which is pretty good. They can go all the way out, so yeah, RC can... <laughs> the elbow, however, is quite strange. The elbow only bends inwardly. So, she has a curling iron arm, but no bicep swivel. So, it's more of a monkey arm. She's like... <laughs> so, that's pretty weird. The elbow doesn't bend forward at all, and the hand is at this ball joint here that's like halfway up her arm. Halfway up her bicep, rather. And it's just really weird, because if you use it, it looks like her arm is just straight up broken. And it just looks awful. These hands suck. Why, w why even try at that point? She has nothing at the waist due to transformation. At the hip, she has a ball-jointed hip that goes really far forward. That is a pretty high kick. Uh, it doesn't go that far backward because of the butt skirt. And uh, they can't go very far outwards uh, due to the cowling sculpting on her thighs. So she can't exactly do any uh, Chun-Li kicks or anything. So it could be a disappointment to some of you in the audience. She has nothing at the thighs, or rather no thigh rotation, but her knees are double jointed. It's really impressive because no other Omnicon has double jointed knees. They can get a double jointed curl, but it does not look nearly this natural. This is a very natural knee bend on RC, and I'm really impressed by that. And it's the only thing this figure does that impresses me. Spoiler alert. After that, there's really nothing else. I mean, she could point her toe, but that just sucks up the heel into her foot, which is really strange and unnatural. So, yeah, RC doesn't have much in the way of good articulation. She has like maybe three good joints on her entire person, and that ain't good. That is not a good sign. Energon RC is the worst Omnicon mold. Not only is she thematically inappropriate for what the Omnicons are generally understood to be, but she's also a bad figure in her own right. Sure, her transformation may be more interesting and her alternate mode more convincing than Signal Flare's, but Signal Flare had a far cleaner execution and could at least use his weapons in more than one pose, and even stand up holding them without much help. It's such a shame because bike transformers could be so much more. My copy of Hunt for the Decepticons Backfire is a testament to that, and I feel he's what RC's designers were going for. But I can't judge a figure on what it's going for instead on what it is. For that, I think RC deserves the rank of tragic. For my next review, I'll be looking at the first Omnicon repaint, Offshoot. This has been Kick Catastrophe. Transform and roll out.